Hey guys, so recently Apple just released their 2020 updated iPhone SE, but when taking a look at it, you might ask yourself, why should I upgrade to this when it is basically the iPhone 7 or 8? I think the iPhone SE 2 has a lot to offer still and could possibly be one of Apple's best selling iPhones. And here is why. Though it has the body of the iPhone 8, it has the internals of the iPhone 11. Before I start listing out specs, it's important to remember that practically it's a $1,000 phone inside of a $400 body. It's going to be way faster, take way better pictures, and have a bump in the storage that you'll appreciate. That being said, the CPU is the A13 Bionic, which is the same as the iPhone 11 Pro. The storage starts at 64 gigabytes, goes up to 128 and then 256. The display is that classic 4.7 inches. The rear camera is 12 megapixels while the front camera is seven. And basically what that means is that you're gonna get some really nice sharp images. And those images will also support portrait mode on both sides, which is a really nice upgrade that this phone has. The video recording is gonna be 4K up to 60 FPS, which basically means that you're gonna get some really nice video up to 60 frames per second, which will look really good and really clean. It is water and dust resistant with an IP67 rating, which is pretty good. And the battery life is the same as the iPhone 8. It has Qi wireless charging and fast charging as long as you get the optional 18 watt adapter. So overall, the specs are pretty good considering the price tag. And while those things may be good and all, you may still be asking why is this something even worth considering? Well, the large quantity of older iPhone users can keep their accessories. Rather than trying to get new phone cases and new accessories on top of buying a brand new phone, they can keep their old ones. They can use their same chargers and cases and any other peripherals. It works with a large range of devices of a similar body type, which brings me to my next point, the form factor. It is small and compact, again, the 4.7 inch display, and it has a familiar design, which basically means that there's gonna be no learning curve, as in you won't have to learn any new gestures, it'll just be the same old thing that you guys are used to. And with these two things, I think that Apple is really trying to hit a community of people that just really like their old phones, really like the old style, and don't necessarily want the best or want to pay for the best. So that is why they're doing this so that you can use your older stuff. You don't have to go out and buy other things. And you also get that small familiar design for people who both like the original design of having that home button and just being used to that design, as well as just in general, having a small and compact device. And last, but probably the most important, is the price. This is one of, if not Apple's lowest launch price. This device costs $399 US plus any discounts if you trade in your current iPhone. I believe if you trade in, for example, an iPhone 7, you can get somewhere between $100 to $150 in discount, which again, reduces that price a lot. And this is a price for what some people could argue is the important parts of the iPhone 11. And I think it's also really important to mention that Apple's best-selling iPhone in 2019, just last year, was their budget phone, the iPhone XR, not any of their premium phones. What that basically means is that there is a large group of people that don't wanna pay the premium price tags. They simply just want something that works, want something that's functional and that can get the job done. And this phone can definitely do that considering the specs. So all in all, considering what you could get out of this phone, if you can get past the outdated looks, there is definitely a market of people that would love this phone. You're essentially, and that's a big essentially, I'm not trying to make the iPhone 11 look bad or anything like that, but you're essentially getting an iPhone 11 at a fraction of the price. And considering that price and what happened last year, plus everyone who has been holding onto their older devices, I would not be surprised if this was the iPhone XR of 2020 and Apple's best selling iPhone. Leave me your thoughts on the 2020 iPhone SE in the comments, whether or not you are excited or if you think this phone just doesn't meet the 2020 standards. Make sure that you like and subscribe down below and I'm Matt and thanks for watching.